So, Dr. Pritam, thank you so much for inviting me here. Uh, I think you are having this conference on sustainable development. So, first thing I would like to appreciate that you have organized this particular event in a, you know, the nature uh, venue, which is more eco-friendly if you compare it with the, you know, the conferences in the hotels or, you know, that's, that's the difference I can see. So, congratulations and we appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And you rightly said that Development and environment with ecology, they are two sides of one coin. We cannot separate them. So they are basically complementing each other. They must complement each other. Otherwise, we can't exist. Otherwise, we can't have a good future for us or for our children. That is the one basic, I would say, principle, you know, when you talk about development. And now let me tell you the values of this built environment because when you say development, so we are talking the development either in the developed countries and this is India is my developing country. And I personally feel that being an Indian, you know, because India is a developing country and we need to build more and more and we are developing more and more because a lot of FDI is coming here, all of us know that and all the foreign investment is coming, not in the urban sector, but also the rural sector. A lot of infrastructure development is happening. So this sustainable world is very, very, it is the need of the hour. Because you are doing development, you have to, you are doing it, but sustainable plus development. So it becomes a core essence, you know, development can't happen alone. Now let's go in the past, you know, just go back. If we look into our Indian values, Indian mythologies. If you see you know, our Veda, Vedic science, we always talk about a Parigriha, which is minimum possession. That means less consumption, reuse and recycle, which is again three our principles, you know. We all over entire the world we talk about reduce, recycle and reuse. You talk about any natural resource, water, you talk about energy, electricity, you talk about waste. I think these three are principle works. So that is the fundamental principle. And if you look into the ancient uh, our forts or any kind of development in the country, you can see that you know that uh, sustainable development by heritage in our values. You see our old, old temples, you see our old forts, you will see all are made with a basic design. Because people even don't need air conditioning in that. You can see the large rainwater harvesting ponds in the ports, in the temples. So that means our ancient culture was by green. They were green. It is us when the population is booming and you know consumerism is increasing. Our lifestyle is changing. So we are more attracting you know, towards the resource consumption. So we want more and more. We want more and more because we have multiple choices. We are just moving towards the, I would say, consumption pattern is so high. Not only in the day-to-day -day products which we are using our day-to-day -day life, but in our built environment also. Now let me give you an example of Mumbai city, because where we are sitting, I think let's talk about that. If you see an aerial view, so you will feel that now it's a concrete jungle. And I think not only in the Mumbai, if you see any other cities, even the globally also, there are some cities I can uh, take their name. So you will find that this concrete jungle, you know this transformation is happening because due to development we are using green cover, we know all those consequences. So those are the challenges, we know the challenges. When we do the development, we lose the green cover, we use, we use lot of resources because we use, we use steel, cement and so many things we need, you know, uh, interior, furnishing items, electricity, water, and you do a lot of construction which also causes the pollution to the city, the air pollution, water pollution, you have a lot of discharge, effluents, so many problems are there. But the solution, because always we cannot talk negative always, we know the problems, we know the challenges, but what is the path ahead in front of us? How we need to bring those ancient and our real values of our culture in our present development? what you know the idea is. This is what the thought process is now. 
what is yeah. from your understanding, what is the very poor area Indian investment in the area of sustainability? Can you highlight one or two? Yeah, because if you see the development and the, uh, I would say, it is coming in the manufacturing industry and uh, in India we have a lot of startup movies also there, There's a, it's a lot of innovation. You know, even the small, small, I, I would say the students, you know, I could see that, especially in the environment sector, you know, I could see that they are doing, every second day they do some new innovation. They are recycling uh, plastics and they are recycling some sort of waste in their own way and they are, you know, focusing on the circular economy uh, aspect actually. So they are doing it practically because they are creating some different product, they are coming with some innovative ideas. So this is helping society. So that's what the positive side is about. And there are a lot of funding, a lot of investors and a lot of angel investors. So that is another aspect. Because you will find negative, positive, you know, in every stock. It is idea is to choose the best, to pick the positive things. This is what I believe in the optimism. Because I don't believe in the negativism. Yes. So I believe my India can do better and we have a lot of opportunities to do. So uh, let's start from that side. So uh, Mr. Kunandar, let me add something. Yeah, sure. sure.
to be honest, cannot afford now sustainable consumption. So the way is, on the other hand, the OECD countries, where the per capita income on average is more than 15 20000 dollars per capita, they call us into the lower middle income country. But if you remove these uh, two, three states' uh, GDP, then uh, we happen to be really a uh, least developed country kind of uh, per capita income. You need to remove Chandigarh, Delhi, Sikkim, Goa, cities like Mumbai, and then see where we are. Now going to this, how we can do the sustainable consumption. I think the consumption must become sustainable in all the developed world. And all those sustainable production should happen in our world. Uh, but I cannot call someone like a third class country, so they call it as the third world economy. So all that production should happen in this kind of low income countries. So think of something like what I am wearing. This is all. Some of these things are made by my own artisans. Uh, this is shoes with the leather and rubber. I think rubber soles are nearly vanished, but you get sometimes. This is all cotton. Yesterday I was wearing pizza. Today is all you get. So natural fabric. Even if we go to the national fabric, we can reduce carbon footprint by 2 to 3 gigawatts. Now, all of a sudden are we going to move to that natural fabric? And is it very, very costly? I think I can sit very comfortable here because I am very 100% comfortable. Now, this Kanchan and they are doing some banana fabric project in Narmada district, just south of Baroda. Uh, near the statue of uh, unity. So these things are possible. And even if you see those uh, banana fiber shirts, they're not very costly, 1200, 1300 rupees made by those artisans. And these shoes, and these are not really costly. I mean, costly by if some security guard wants to buy it, but I think 2300 rupees kind of shoe is not really very costly by no price. So consumption, sustainability, everybody has to do. And that is where this ESDG 12 talks about. So this is my primary thought on sustainable consumption and sustainable production because we are in both. And somebody should do it if we say that okay, they did it. Nobody in the first world or OECD is going to agree that we are going to subsidize 100 billion dollars per year. Nobody is going to take it. Okay. They are democracies, they are their own student loans and everything. And if you see on that consumption pattern, they are just too much of integratedness. The consumers are completely integrated. So now they should give the free. <laughs> like we are the dead waivers to the farmers. But I guess I would be talking on. <laughs> they need to have their consumers also. Now going back to the talk, what we do, I think we promote our research project. We do the this, uh, I mean, there could be some man-made fabric in our artisan's project in Pune. But again, 99% of the production is the national fabric production in the garment factory. The name of that NGO is Sous Garment Artisans Association. We do a couple of uh, leather association, one in Saka, another one in Saka. The third one is the banana fabric in town. Furniture we made of bamboo in Sindhu district and Bhuj in Gujarat. On the other hand, now we are to circular economy also. So the power consumption, now this power is all, Maharashtra is I think uh, very skewed, it's roughly 80 to 85 percent uh, electricity comes from coal fire. So they are moving towards the pellet fire. So within that coal, 5 to 10 percent would be coming from bio coal produced electricity, which is the bio energy. And second thing is we are polluting too much of our food with chemical fertilizer. So some of that chemical fertilizer we would like to replace with uh, biochar, like a bit with uh, vermicompost. So these are the things we do on uh, sustainable, we do the sustainable production through the artisans association and carbon producer organizations. And consumption, that I think is all yours, you can do it. So you are, you are mentioning that cottage-based production, we can go back to village-based, like Mahatma Gandhi told that village-based production probably help us to more sustainability? Yeah, so Mahatma Gandhi definitely told us but then we got a wave of mass production 
Now we are viewers of that. So the production by masses. So the viewers is production by masses. So by farmers and by artisans produce. And we are massive half million people with us. Sorry, uh, just to keep touch on briefly. So parcel of, uh, as an entrepreneur, parcel of is a vision to invest in India if you want to move in circular economy. Sure. Well, I'm biased. I always believe in representing in the education sector and looking as well at what you wrote in the Blue Planet magazine. What is it really, you know, the magazine invested in sustainability? It's towards knowledge sharing. So if I had to invest, what if I, as I'm here wanting to invest in India, transnational academic programs. So when we talk about knowledge share, I want to share with you what is the third export market for Australia two decades in a row. International education, more than tourism. So why Australia? Why Canada? You'd say because it's a strong economy. But hey, I just came back from the Philippines. It's a massive hub for international education. So why Philippines? So when we start to think about knowledge share and transnational academic programs, what if? What if all the education systems have been lagging and what we start to exchange knowledge and give certificates here in India? Australian certificates and maybe Israeli certificates and maybe those hubs of knowledge that are the universities and the skills places they actually collaborate and we give that knowledge share in a certificate which is actually acknowledged. Yes, your knowledge is now mapping as well to Australia. So you actually get credits not only here in India. So once we actually invest so much in research and development in Australia, time is money, isn't it? So if we actually can share knowledge on a technical way and really invest in the government level to recognize these transnational academic programs, then we can really fast forward. In Embrotech, in our training organization, we teach innovation as well as sustainability and ecosystems. I always like to ask people, how do you achieve innovation? What is the trigger? How do you get it? There are many answers, of course, there are all two. In my opinion, you cannot achieve innovation unless you put opposite sides to come to the same solution. So put Israel with India and Australia to deliver the same program, mandatory that you will have innovation, and we will all progress much faster. So transnational academic programs, would give us the ability to bring to the table innovation across all sectors, from the energy efficiency, from the waste, from the biosecurity, as well, of course, as talking about the oceans. If India will invest strategically in marine and blue economy, but Sri Lanka will not, then we haven't achieved anything. If Israel will look after the Red Sea, but Jordan will not, then there will be no impact whatsoever. So when we talk about transnational academic programs, and today is a Saturday, it's a day that usually I do not work, there is a saying in the Bible that love your neighbors, you love yourself. Exchanging knowledge with our neighbor is mandatory for success. And this is my investment. Thank you. Thank you. You are working regularly with nature, and that is very much uh, sustainable production. So you can highlight and investment. As we uh, heard about these uh, views from uh, the speakers and this about uh, sustainable consumption. So from a responsible consumption and responsible production. We will talk responsible production. Responsibility does not lie only with the farmers. It lies uh, with our society. As we are forgetting one important element of the planet to be taken care of since so many ages is the soil. The production happens only in the soil. Only 0.001% can happen in the soil. But whatever we we'll consume globally is from the soil. And since so many decades, soil is degrading. Desertification is happening rapidly. Soil health is deteriorating. So we are taking care of our health without considering health of soil. So sustainable or responsible production starts with improving soil health. 
So the total societal concern right from the childhood should start with the taking care of soil. And that happens where there is soil. So again we will go to the farming practices, villages, where we should start thinking of maintaining, restoring the soil area. Enhancing the soil area. Because what is needed now for the optimum production of crops, there should be minimum 1% of the carbon in the soil. But as Maharashtra soil we consider, we have less than 0.5% 5, 5 carbon in soil. And globally, it is clear that after about 20 or 30 years, soils will be not able to produce more or produce optimally what we require. So there will be a, there is you can say production of heavy food cycle, food scarcity in coming decades. And that can be avoided when we start thinking of soil. So the innovations, investments should go in maintaining the storage of the soil. As I am working on the project on climate or resilient agriculture in Maharashtra. So resilience building at farm level, at a village level, can happen with a different situation. One is enhancing water security, second enhancing soil health, and third enhancing crop diversity. So when we talk of water security, every drop should be conserved well. When we talk of soil security, every particle of soil oxygen pattern. So as we are changing our consumption pattern, farmers or producers can cook and adjust their cropping systems according to the consumption needs. But why doing all this thing? The only thing which is going there, going to happen there and happening there is a changing weather. Climate change is a very big work. What farmer is concerned about the weather variabilities because he is growing from seasonally. The weather in the system should be optimum for him. And then what is needed? The brain, intelligence of the youth, of the education system to help the community for proper decision making based on the science. Here the uh, role of science evidence and data events comes here. What are the resources with me? How can I optimize it? What is the forecast of weather? Yes. 
and there are some uh, Shunyam house, like Net Zero house. I think students who are sitting here, have you heard about Net Zero concept? Net Zero, have you heard about? Have you heard about green buildings? Oh, you heard about it. So, do, do you know the concept of green building? How do you just you know, explain what is green building? Anybody else? Yeah. CO2 equivalent CO2 is less than uh, the before. You can say. Yes. So I think let me make you uh, understand it like this. Uh, first, I think I'll be starting with the COP26 and COP27. I'll correlate it with all those visual and mission. Because our country, you know, our Prime Minister has already done the commitment in the COP26 that we will be producing solar energy by 2030. We have to produce 500 gigawatt. And already 43% of the, uh, I would say, uh, our target is already completed. It's only 7% is remaining. That's the one thing. Second is, there is another commitment of reducing 1 billion uh, tons of carbon in the uh, entire portfolio of our country from every sector. So that 1 billion is another challenge. So that's what we need to talk about this green. We need to uh, add this decarbonization process in the development part and we need to talk about these green materials, green products because they are the materials in low impact environmental selection and there are, uh, let me tell you, there are uh, green certified product market in India now initially there was only one or two products which were green certified now we have for construction industry itself more than 5000 products in country which are having gone through the LCA process and green building definition, a building which consumes less water, which consume, which is basically energy efficient, which consume less energy, which generates less waste and which provides better environmental quality to its occupants and also take care of health and well-being of the people. So we correlate this green building concept with the Panch Tattwa. And you have heard about Panch Tattwa, five elements of Mother Earth. In Indian mythology we explain, right? And those Panch Tattwa, I am correlating with the materials, okay? In yes. Panch Tattwa, when we talk about Bhumi, Dharti, I think I speak in Bhumi now. So that Dharti, Bhumi, sirs talk about soil, say soil. So when we address the soil conservation process, soil quality process, we look into the flora and fauna, we try to preserve and conserve our water bodies, our biodiversity, our trees. This is what the first, this particular Panch Tattwa aspect, you know, this element we talk about in the building tree. This is what Bhumi Dhara. So how do you address your side elements like your soil quality, your water quality, like your hydrology, your geography, your climatology. So all those aspects come in this first element of Panch Tattwa. When you talk about Agni, so when you talk about Agni, that means you are addressing energy fire. So when we say, okay, we need energy conservation and we correlate it with the carbon because carbon is a very broader framework. Not only the energy here, transportation and scope and scope, scope three, blah, blah, blah. so many things are there. But for a common man, it is electricity consumption also. So energy fire. So that is the energy efficient materials which consumes less energy when you manufacture them. So that is what this is an LCA loop. And when you use those materials, they are again giving you the better performance and better results in terms of energy saving. So we address this fire, this element. Then we come to the value. Like we are addressing their fresh air. We are talking about air, the quality of air we are breathing. We are addressing the air pollution. We are also addressing the sky, like you know here you are sitting today, so this is a naturally ventilated venue, so you are not sitting in the centralized AC. So we are addressing that cross ventilation and fresh air, indoor air quality, all these elements in that aspect of bio. Then it comes the Akash, that is also your Panch Tattwa. And when we address the Akash, that means here we are trying to address your sunlight your sun energy. So like I am sitting here, if I am using sunlight here, I need less artificial
artificial lights. So this is what we correlate, you know, we correlate. And fifth is the jewel, which is jewel, is water. So when I address my water efficiency in the product manufacturing, its raw material extractions, in the complete loop of LCA again, extraction, manufacturing, in each and every step of the process, I look how I address conservation part. So three R principle here again coming into the picture. So you are consuming less than recycling and reusing. So this is for the gel and water efficiency and the low impact environmental materials. So this is a loop of these five elements of Mother Earth, Panch Tatwa, which is I think we are blessed in India that we are the Dharti of Rishis and Mahamudis who have already given this wisdom and gyan to us in our Vedas. So we are the blessed. We know the value of sun energy. We know the value of water. We worship it. So this is what even the product picture is about. So we should respect. So that's what responsible production we are talking about. We are talking about responsible production. My daddy, my grandmother, I'm from Himachal, very small place, Mandi, before Kullu and Manali. So my childhood was like that, you know, we used to wear one suit and my daddy is again recycling and reusing. So my cousin sisters are also wearing that. Even right now also all your blazers and coat, my grandfather's is lying my Elvira. So those were our habits actually. But now we have to, we are enforced to add this green and eco in our core system, in our ecosystem. Other way we were green by default. This is what the lifestyle change is. But now let me tell you, we are again going back. Now we are talking eco, we are talking about spirituality, we are talking about yoga, we are after COVID, we are talking about health and health. So basically yoga is a diet. It's like we work, we change according to the diet. We change about our habits according to things which happens around us. And this is the human nature. This is what I would like to say. Thank you so much, ma'am. Very systematically explained. Yes. Which makes it close to 1.1 tons per day. 
and if it's so complicated to build artificial reefs. So if we want to think about curriculum, we need to actually make sure that there are jobs on the other side, right? So we need to make sure that there are policies in place that will make it simpler to actually manifest. So for example, you know, in Israel now, there was a huge reform to make innovation in blue economy more streamlined in terms of politician and processes. So yes. Thank you so much. Soy Bob uh, Mayer, uh, Soil Health was considered responsible production. If you start thinking in all uh, sectors, what very ancient practice we have to stop, stop disturbing our soil. When we start disturbing our soil, we started in 1940, when first plow was manufactured by American company. Then we started plowing our land by our higher flow and we started over deteriorating our soil. So the time has come now, we have to stop plowing soil and that is why we can regenerate our soil health. So this practice is very difficult to digest from the community, by the community also. But now it is a, a way we have to go ahead and in global level, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, part of America and part of Australia, they are now stopped killing their land and uh, a crore of hectares is now very good to generated soil, you can say regenerated. So we should start thinking in this line and I am working with the farmers to make them aware about this particular practice and we are very happy to share with you that in Maharashtra around 5,500 farmers have stopped growing their land since last five to six years, but they are getting a very good number of crops of uh, right from paddy to cotton to soybean, maize and gram. Okay, I think rural India, I think uh, first is agriculture inputs. We are making it for 7,000 years. Last 50, 60 years only the agriculture inputs are coming from the companies like Mayuko or whatever. Multinationals. So, really, what the organic class of which uh, Kodagar Sai was talking about, massive amount of land, I think 25% uh, land in India is below 0.5% organic carbon, so it is officially in product. It will take 60 years to do it. Other way, it could take, uh, I mean, even if we use this carbon sequestering and biochar technologies, it will take us two to three years to make it per time again. And that will come at a cost. So I think this agility input with the production of from our waste, which we have uh, cow dung and other many, that we can infest with, uh, we can convert into compost. Or we use all our agriculture waste which is agriculture residue. We make the bioenergy from that, which is the biocore or we make the biogas or whatever. What is the digested cup? Again, that's a very good uh, digested manual that becomes a compost, which is again used as agriculture manual. It's NPK content is uh, pretty good, 1, 1.5% on average of NPK. Organic carbon is 15% in all these organic manuals. Organic carbon in our biochar, which we make out of the agriculture recipe, that comes to the 71, 72% in Bidhar. Second thing, Mithi, you talk about this uh, biodiversity and the return cropping which we are doing. We went to the industrial scale of power. I mean, in rainfed areas, you see some diversity because we collect this uh, agriculture uh, waste. But if you go to north and northwest India, you will see two crops. So, even on your responsible consumption or your uh, responsible or uh, sustainable consumption point of view, even if you want to consume, you will get two grains, rice and wheat. Earlier you used to get 10 wheat. Now you have to allow this uh, year of millets and all some kind of drama and fantasy around it, creating another level of ecstasy. But I think our, uh, I mean even my mother and my father, they were in a kind of place where they had eight types of millets to eat on daily basis, eight to nine types of pulses to eat. You have only two pulses, gram, which is largely a black gram, and you have two, which is you call the pigeon peas. Okay. 
So your two pulses, two cranes, <laughs> you have minutes, it's your jaw and bajana, you will get nothing more than that. So <laughs> you have reduced the diversity to food. You want to you to it, I mean it will be a challenge for you unless we come in a big numbers. So all these are opportunities. Whatever is not available to you is the opportunity. So you want to produce it, you want to make a production, yes, we can do it. Then uh, why do you make biscuits out of it? Uh, we are not a biscuit in the So I think that you can have the millet bhakri as you have here. You can have the millet balls as you have in South India. You can have that with local, local modern, local vegetables, whatever you need with. That's the fantastic way of doing it. Make a food change out of that. That will kill McDonald's. I I'm believe me, I mean, three of my afternoons are making one lakh per day. And their sales is more than the McDonald's is doing right now. You can compare that and I take you to both joints, which are maybe three to five kilometers from the outside. I show you both. Thank you.